Hello, and welcome to Western Roman History. Any discussion of the Roman Empire in the 5th century will involve the question of why did the Western Roman Empire fall? A chief part of this was the reign of the Emperor Honorius. Honorius is often blamed for Rome's decline. Ever since the 6th century, authors have characterised Honorius as a weak and useless boy that allowed Rome to be sacked and Britain to be abandoned, the emperor being more concerned with his pet chicken. But to what extent was Honorius actually responsible for the disasters the Western Roman Empire faced during his reign? Furthermore, was he one of Rome's worst emperors? I would like to thank my generous patrons for their support, and if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe for more content about the late Roman and Byzantine Empire. Stay notified using the bell, and now let us continue. A major accusation levelled at the boy emperor is that the empire was left significantly weakened by the end of his reign in AD 423. It is true that Britain was lost. Gaul, Spain and Illyricum were devastated. The Subi, Visigoths and Vandals remained in control of territory in both Gaul and Spain. However, both the Subi and Visigoths had been defeated and were on the run by 423. The Visigoths had been reduced to Roman foderati after over a decade of conflict. That they became major threats after Honorius's reign was more the fault of uncertainty and civil war in the Western Roman Empire, first between John the Tyrant and Theodosius II, and then between the generals of Valentinian III. It is noteworthy that until 406, the Western Empire triumphed over its enemies. Stilicho and his subordinates defeated Alaric twice. They were victorious against the rebel Gildo in Africa, the Franks, and also the invasion of Radagaisus. After Stilicho's general Sarus failed to defeat the usurper Constantine III in 407, the fate of Gaul, Britain, and Spain passed from Norris to Constantine III. Constans, Maximus, Gerontius, and Jovinus from 407 to 413. To Honorius's credit, according to Erosius, Honorius was responsible for redirecting imperial attention away from the Visigoths after they had sacked Rome against the usurpers, which resulted in his general, Constantius III, recovering most of Spain and Gaul from 411 to his death in 421. The loss of Britain was not Honorius' fault, nor did he have the opportunity to recover it. Stilicho's attention was focused on Alaric and Constantinople. Meanwhile, the Subi, Vandals, and Alans smashed through the Rhine's defences and ravaged Gaul. The situation was so serious that the British legions rebelled and proclaimed their own emperors, Marcus, then Gratian, and lastly Constantine III. From 406 to 410, the island was under the control of Constantine III. Due to his ineptitude, Britain and Amorica rebelled against his rule, apparently because he was so obsessed with affairs in Italy that he neglected to defend the provinces the very role he had been empowered to fulfil. Once Honorius and Constantius III recovered Gaul, the priority was to reinforce the region and recover Spain. Since Britain had not fallen to foreign attack, but had rejected continental rule, a recovery of the island may have been effected in the future had fortunes continued to go the Romans' way in the 420s. That it did not, again was not within Honorius's power to change since he was dead by 423, at which time the more important province of Spain had not been recovered. Honorius is often considered a bad emperor for ordering the execution of Stilicho, his regent, and Magus de Militum. Olympius manipulated Honorius and the imperial court to turn against Stilicho, spreading rumours that he was colluding with Alaric and planning to conquer Constantinople to make his son Eucarius emperor. The army turned against Stilicho's supporters and massacred them, but Honorius had no control over his troops. Honorius even attempted to save those he could in Tachinum, 
putting himself at risk. Once public opinion had turned against Stilicho, Honorius was obliged to eliminate him since Stilicho was accused of being a usurper. His execution of Eucarius was also understandable since Alaric was trying to find Eucarius to proclaim him as emperor, probably with the same intentions he had with proclaiming Priscus Attalus as emperor. Stilicho's death caused his barbarian Bucellari and their families to join Alaric. The culpability for this should lie as much with Olympius and the Romans involved in overthrowing Stilicho as much as with Honorius. Stilicho failed to defeat Constantine III, who controlled half of the Western Roman Empire and its armies. The Magister Militum's desire for appeasement with Alaric also left him open to attack from his political opponents. That Stilicho fell as a result should not abdicate him from failing to deal with the political opposition against him, nor entirely condemn Honorius for making what became an increasingly politic decision despite the Visigothic threat. It should be added that once Olympius proved his worthlessness, Honorius had him eliminated and replaced him with his competent and effective general, Constantius III. The anonymous Gallic narrative for Honorius's reign credited him for being extremely effective at suppressing usurpers, which has often been counted against Honorius because he concentrated on internal enemies rather than foreign threats. However, this is an unfair claim. In fact, initially Honorius and Stilicho planned to combine the Roman army in Italy and Alaric's Visigoths to defeat the usurper Constantine III. When Stilicho was executed and the Visigoths turned on the Romans, Honorius and Olympius turned their attention to dealing with Alaric. Zosimus tells us that it was because of Honorius's focus on the Visigoths and Constantine III's custody of Honorius's cousins that prompted the emperor to recognize the usurper as a legitimate emperor. Thus Honorius intentionally avoided civil conflict to focus on a foreign threat. Meanwhile, Constantine III tried to press his advantage to lead his troops into Italy to help Honorius defeat Alaric. It was only once Honorius eliminated Olympius and Constantine III's supporters at court learned his governor Heraclianus defended Africa from an invasion by Priscus Attalus, and the Visigoths, after sacking Rome, travelled to southern Italy, that he turned his attention to the usurpers in Gaul. There was some necessity to defeating Constantine III, since Gaul was one of the main provinces of the Western Roman Empire because of its troops and resources. Without it, the empire's strength was only ever at half. Once Constantius III recaptured Gaul in 413, he was victorious against the Visigoths, secured Gaul up to the Loire, and began the reconquest of Spain. Honorius also eliminated Priscus Attalus, Jovinus, and Sebastianus through negotiations with the Visigoths. Additionally, the forces of Gerontius and Maximus and Constantine III's general Edebic defected to Honorius during these campaigns. Lastly, the most famous point made against Honorius is the sack of Rome in 410. Honorius had to ride a fine line between appeasement and a bellicose stance towards Alaric. His court was divided between the two, with the latter faction being responsible for eliminating Stilicho. However, there continued intense negotiations between the two rulers from 408 to 410. Rome had withstood two sieges by Alaric, and when he besieged it a third time, it seemed likely to hold again. The main issue for Rome's defences was its limited access to food, as witnessed in future sieges as well. The situation got so bad in the first two sieges that cannibalism was reported. Alaric managed to enter Rome by cutting off supplies into the city and was let in due to treason, not by assault. Though a shock, Rome was quickly repopulated and rebuilt by its inhabitants and the senatorial aristocracy. Honorius himself is credited with aiding in the recovery of Rome. Though a significant event, 
Alaric's sack of Rome earned his cause nothing, for Honorius, though unable to tame the Visigoths, they were unable to beat him. Just before the sack, Honorius had narrowly survived Alaric's own advance on Ravenna, thanks to his Gothic commander Sarus. This could have resulted in a far worse crisis for the Western Empire, had Ravenna and the Imperial Court fallen, and forced Honorius to abandon the Western Empire. Therefore, though Honorius has and probably will continue to be viewed extremely negatively, it is my hope that this video has at least challenged some of the common claims made against him. Was he a perfect emperor? Far from it. But he was not as culpable for the decline of the West as he is usually accused of being, and could even be said to have helped prevent the Western Roman Empire from declining far sooner than it did. Others must also share the blame for why this emperor's reign proved so disastrous. Olympius, the usurpers Constantine III, Priscus Attilus, Gerontius and Maximus, as well as the number and aggressiveness of the barbarians themselves, should also be considered. It is hard to see what another emperor could have done differently had they been in Honorius's shoes. A young, orphan boy at the head of the Western Roman Empire on the eve of one of its greatest crises. Thank you very much for watching, and this has been Western Roman History.